And Ukraine says Russian forces launched a combined air attack on its territories overnight, releasing 14 missiles and 17 drones. Ukraine's air force says they destroyed seven Russian missiles and 17 UAVs. And for more on the G7 loan and the lingering war, I have uh, joining me Dr. Bola Abedero, Global Affairs Analyst uh, from the United Kingdom. Good to have you join us on the world now. Thank you for having me. Dr. Abedero, did you foresee the G7 uh, using or lending Ukraine Russia's frozen assets? And what will the, this have? What's the implication of this on that region? Yes, uh, I, I did, because this com conversation has been going on, this discussion about uh, um, uh, using the profits from uh, the three over $300 billion worth of, uh, worth of uh, Russian assets in, in, in the European Union. Um, the discussion has been going on for quite a while. So yes, uh, this was not surprising. Uh, in terms of the implication, generally, I, I think that this is a significant uh, uh, tranche of funds that would go to Ukraine, not necessarily to uh, the military efforts alone, but it will also, uh, as the G7 has mentioned yesterday, that there will be flexibility in the disbursement of the funds. The funds will also go into reconstruction efforts and towards re humanitarian supplies. So uh, yes, this is this is a needed amount uh, for, for Ukraine, uh, even though Ukraine has gotten a lot of international support, financial support from the U.S., more than $175 billion of U.S. aid has gone into Ukraine. But an additional $50, 50 billion uh, loan, uh, $50 billion loan, will definitely um, uh, be useful to Ukraine, the economy, and the war effort. Mm. And uh, President Biden, while uh, signing the bilateral agreement, said that uh, this is a reminder that uh, uh, Putin cannot divide the region. Uh, looking at the fact that uh, the Russian president has described the move as a theft, what sort of reaction do you expect to this after this meeting? Well, well um, it's not surprising that the, the Russians are very uh, unhappy with the move by the G7. Uh, and it, is, it remains to be seen what Russia can actually do. Um, because the amount of money that Russia, uh, uh, the amount of Russia's money stuck in the European Union is quite sizable. As you said in your report, it's over $320 billion. Um, but, uh, the, and, and, and in this case, the amount of European funds stuck in Russia is, is it's minute in comparison, just about $33 billion, uh, 33 billion euros. So even if Russia wants to seize uh, European Union funds or uh, funds from European investments and European companies stuck in Russia, it is still very uh, uh, low in comparison to the funds that the Russians have uh, in European banks and especially European Central Bank. Um, but what I think is more concerning about this is the precedent that it will lay. I am happy that in some ways um, the European cooler heads uh, um, prevailed because initially what was being discussed was that the whole $300 billion will be seized and given to Ukraine as some form of reparations and uh, um, uh, as, as a punishment for Russia's invasion of, of Ukraine. That would have set, on, uh, set the world on, on the dangerous precedent because uh, it would have un, unraveled the international order in, the, in a way that we have not seen in a, in a long while. So, uh, in some ways, the, 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 the profits from the investment is a, is, it's, 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 it's a kind of a compromise that the U.S. and other partners um, are, have reached. Um, as I said, I'm not sure what the Russians can do. And it, there is also a concern that could this also undermine perhaps uh, peace deals if the Russians do come to an agreement with, with the Ukrainians in the nearest future. How will Ukraine pay for the $50 billion? Because this amount of money has been emerged from Russia's funds. Mm -hmm. And if those funds are unfreezed or are frozen in, in the nearest future, how will Ukraine pay? So these are a lot of questions that we don't have answers to. Uh, I, I may I have serious impact on the way that the war uh, progresses in the nearest future.
Mm. All right. Um, Dr. Adedura, I also wanted to, you know, talk to you about uh, the fact that many will see this as a, as a breakthrough for, for Ukraine, especially in the war against uh, Russia. But not many will see uh, the death burden that this loan will have on, on Ukraine. As of uh, the end of April, uh, Ukraine's government uh, guaranteed debt was about 100 and $52 billion. Uh, I also wanted to take you up on uh, the fact that this may affect uh, the external debt burden, uh, the debt sustainability, and the sovereignty of the nation. Can you react to that? Uh, well, that's actually a very important, it's a very important point, especially because this is not a grant, it's a loan that will, will, will be, be repaid. And it's, uh, it's uh, an additional uh, debt to to the, to the Ukrainian nation, especially for a country that uh, is not the aggressor. You know, this all of this uh, uh, consequences, financial consequences, infrastructure, infrastructural uh, 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 destabilization uh, consequences. That is, it's that that the war has brought on it. I, I think it's slightly. There is some concern that um, in terms of reconstruction, Ukraine will need a lot of support. But I think that what, what, would, what would really be very important to see later on is, this, is the extent to which Russia will pay and will try to ameliorate some of those concerns that you have raised. Mm -hmm. Is there a sense that international partners will force Russia after the end of the war to take on some of the debts that uh, uh, Ukraine has, 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 um, has put on itself uh, in, in, in defense of its territory? And, and I think that's an important point that will, will, will be will, that remains to be seen and hopefully in some ways uh, will will be resolved in favor of Ukraine because as you said it's, a, it's unfair that a country that had to defend itself from an aggressive attack by Ukraine will has been saddled with with this amount of, of debt and, and burden mm. all right uh, dr Adedira, uh the g7 meeting is still ongoing and we're hoping there will be a discussion as regards uh, uh, a ceasefire deal as uh, on uh, Israel and Gaza. Um, Dr. Bola Dedoron, Global Affairs Analyst from the United Kingdom, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me.